For today's commentary, I'm doing something different. I'm going to try a 1v1 against my good friend and teammate, V9 Edgewalker, or Edgewalker on VNet. Now, I met this guy originally from playing Iron Banner in Destiny 1. We started te teaming more towards the end of Destiny 1, start of Destiny 2, and when we realized that Destiny 2 was centered around power ammo and controlling it and obtaining it, we thought as a team it was best if Edgewalker pulled the power ammo because this guy is a monster with the sniper rifle. Edge, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, just like you said, Cam, I we met in Iron Banner about a year ago, a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. um, I was in high school at the time, now I'm in college. Uh, Exciting. Like, like Cam said, I wasn't that great at sniping in, at the beginning of D2, but they fed me power ammo and I became a monster at sniping just because of the help that they influenced me and I'm Kind of yeah, it's, now. it sounds like I'm joking or something, but really this guy is known in the PC community for, despite rocking a controller, still being able to snipe with the best of them. He does play MK occasionally, but controller is where he feels at home. Now for today we're going to be doing a 1v1 survival, 10 rounds to win, 1 minute round, and uh, 0 lives, so first kill will win you the round. And here's the thing, you're going to say, but there's no radar, I know. It makes it fun. There's going to be power ammo that spawns in the middle of the map, and whoever controls it is probably the more likely uh, person to win the match. So it emphasizes movement immediately. We're going to be listening for sound cues, and we have a gentleman's rule of not using emotes or threat detector. That's a perk that highlights uh, bottom left of your screen when someone's near you. So I think we're pretty much good to start this. Edge, if you could mute and deafen as we start. Will do. Perfect. Talk Thank you, you dude. So for the loadout for today, after that long-winded explanation, I am copying Edgewalker's go-to loadout. It doesn't really matter what he uses in stats, it's whatever he finds important or consistent. We both agree that mobility is one of the most important stats, especially when using a 110 hand cannon like Kremil's Dagger. Opening shot, I use AP, he uses Drop Mag to make up for that abysmal reload speed, while not too big of a range loss, and I use Crossfire. Survive. He also likes the Stompies, because they give you extended slide distance, which helps you set up some very, very nasty snipe shots. And it keeps you overall evasive, the sprint helps, just a great exotic. We already found each other. He got first shot, I have to bail. He hears my reload too. He's got to suspect I'm here by now. Saw him. Spot him. Okay. Gonna nade out. Got him with the nade. Abilities are okay in a 1v1. Because we're both going to have him by the time we engage. I got really lucky there. He missed his shot. But that's how these work. You see how we have to push each other because there's power ammo. Stompies are also good for manipulating your jump a little bit better. With control jump, it makes you even more controlled. With triple, it gives you a slight control, which is still great because you have two jumps. And, oh shit. Gonna have to dodge out of this one. He has higher recovery than me, so I can't get too overzealous. I heard his jump. You might not be able to hear it over the sound of my keyboard, so I'm keeping that in mind. I hit him with Risk Runner, big mistake, and he gets power. Let's pray to God he doesn't hit me. I'm gonna try to be as evasive as I possibly can. I spotted him, he spotted me. Alright, now zone's up. Didn't talk about this because I didn't know if it would actually come to this. But playing the zone is very important in 1v1s. I tagged it to let him know that I'm going to stand near the zone, trying to bait him out of his snipe spot. Of course he's going to hold a hard angle. He hears me now. And I'm dead. So he went around into the bay and it paid off. Good for him. You guys may think this is a little boring, 
But trust me, these things get heated when two people are really playing to win. For me, it's a friendly rivalship. Rivalry. Rivalship? That's not a word. Rivalry friendship. We're both just trying to become better players by trying to outplay each other. And if one of us wins, good job. That's how these work. My nades are a little strong. I'm thinking of switching to skips, but I don't want to proc his risk runner and give him a chance to fight back immediately. Uh, Stompies are really effective with high jump, especially against controller users, but for sake of the commentary, I'm matching his loadout exactly. Not moving. He heard the drop, but I'm still not moving. I heard his movement. He heard my reload. And now let's attack. Oh, the trade! That's what I'm talking about. Kramil's dagger is a monster. One of the best hand cannons in the game because it has so much range. Okay, so you might be wondering about supers. Like, Cammy, that's a free round. Having an uncontested super. Yes, it is a free round. For me initially, but then he gets one right after. So it's most optimal to play fast then slow for whoever happens to have the first super. I hear his movement to the left. I was right on the on the call, but I wasn't fast enough to react. Uh, for anybody who says that sound cues don't exist in this game, they certainly do. You just gotta perk up and listen. There's also shadows, dust, uh, little particles when you jump sometimes, when you slide especially. Titan jetpack, warlock floof, it all exists. I used my uh, cover there, my 10 mobility, to get a small hop over it, just barely exposing my head. And it's an SMG shooting a barrage of bullets, so it's a pretty safe risk. Calculated risk. Now, I'm about to have a super, but so is he. So I have to use mine immediately before he sees it. Now he's about to see it. He knows. He knows. So now the best thing for me to do, seeing as this goes to 10 rounds, is to play painfully slow. Almost, in fact, give him the snipe because he will try his absolute best to arc strider me. So I'm taking a very long approach. He knows that this is optimal for me to do, so he'll be thinking that, setting up for that. See, he just got his Arc Strider. Now, I cannot give myself away. We agreed not to emote. If I emote, I'm going to give him a kill. But at the same time, I'm also trying to cross across the map so that he cannot find me. I don't hear any sound cues, so I'm going to sprint. The reason I walked across is because I wanted to pay attention and spot him. If I'm sprinting, I'm looking in the direction I'm moving. If I'm walking, I can just strafe away. So now I wait trying to spot him out. In fact, let's not even give him the benefit of a long angle. I should have jumped over that to cross, but jumping would give me a sound cue and give him an advantage. Ten seconds. Okay, zone's about to pop up. Stopping to listen. Tiebreaker active. You have one last I don't see him on the right side. So I'm going to assume left, or top balcony. There he goes on the point. I'm going to have to slide out now. He spotted me. Mobility. The guy's a monster. I knew giving him snipe would win him the round, but the idea was to try to also force him to use the super. Edge is a smarter player than that. And I'm just illustrating what happens when you underestimate somebody. He he messed me up big time. I'm gonna try my best to rush him down and get him to bait with the uh, arc strider. Just get rid of it. I'll take the L on this. Oh, good for him! I tried to helicopter float, do a little bit of damage with risk runner, and then stab him because there's no way he would have 
risk runner damage resistance while he's in a super because you have to be holding the risk runner to get it so now i'm ahead on super energy he's actually closer than you think because he does have a kill and he had the same amount of time of stall but because he just used it i'm ahead on super nice this is great Oh, he had Risk Runner out, so my melee didn't do any significant damage to him. That's what makes Risk Runner so fun. I think my best approach is to rush him down this time. Try to change it up. Now, I know I rushed him down last time, but seeing it twice in a row might be a little jarring. <laughs> Risk Runner is so powerful for that reason. This is getting close. The enemy leads. Catch up and crush. Same thing, I got a sound cue last time, and so I sort of had an idea of where to peek first. He might have had a sound cue. No sliding. Fuck. Walk it out. You obliterated the enemy. He got a little overzealous and chased instead of like controlling mid. But at the same time, he knows I have closer super than him. But one team must fall. No lives left. All right, we're gonna try something 200 IQ. Rest when you're dead. We're gonna make a lot of fucking noise in the mid. So what I was trying to do there is to bait him into me as the grenade fell and maybe he was going to go for a melee so I could simultaneously put in damage while the grenade tags him. It was a very big risk because you're losing your grenade, but for an opponent as good as Edgewalker, something like that is almost necessary to throw him off. Listening to my right. My footsteps might have gave me away. Thirty seconds. Both teams out of reserves. End this. The reason I'm standing here and not reloading is because reloading makes noise, and I only need three bullets to kill him. I can actually wait for the next power. Or hit him with the super. He might snipe me though, so I gotta be careful. Jumping, I was gonna say, jumping locks my trajectory, but I needed to jump because I needed as much info as I could possibly muster in that short amount of time. And then pop the super, swipe towards him, be evasive, all that jazz. Now I have first super, I need to use it immediately. He's gonna be playing back, so I need to take an alternate angle. He might try the same outward approach I did. I'm ready for it. He did. I caught him. Opposing team annihilated. So this is a good time to talk about the sniper rifle. A lot of people perceive it as too hard to use. I perceive it as put a lot of practice in and it'll pay dividends. And it certainly does for someone like Edge and a lot of good players I know on PC. That was easier. He also had the risk runner out, so there was a chance that if he took any arc damage from me, the bolt would have done half the damage, so it was better not to even peek out again for me. I'm gonna go balcony. I should play slow, but at this point the game will end before I get another super. So I have to, I saw him, I spotted him. So I'm gonna go around, walk, take it slow. He might have thought I didn't see him. Gonna jump, but still stay on the bottom floor. He can spot me through the crack. 
He might not think I'm gonna immediately go on it. I'm gonna 180 snap on him if I have to. No, no bad, no bad matters. I hit a pretty decent shot for a body shot. It all comes down to this one. Now I'm gonna try this grenade again. Not because I'm disrespecting Edge by not wanting to end the match early, but because I genuinely think it has some promise if I pull it off right. Let's get out of here. You see my angling right there? Son of a... So he backtracked back around to have full visual on the power. I thought he was going to directly chase me so I could bait him with a nade. Let's see if I can kill his Arc Strider before he gets me though. I'm still going to rush him down because at this point I don't think I'm getting another super between two rounds. That landed on the ceiling, I'll note that for later. I'll just run away and get my nade back. Let him have snipe. Does he pull? This is info. Both teams out of reserves. End this. I can't run towards him, I have to run away from him. Now we go. Oh, this is huge. He has to push me. Now I can cancel his Rack Strider. I tried. I made a lot of noise right there. So that gave me away. You may not think it sounds like a lot of noise, but when you got the headphones cranked up, it, it is loud. And he still has an Arc Strider. This has come down to the wire. No more fancy nades. I'm ready for this. I spotted him. He spotted me. I could not have beat him with the, uh... I could not beat him with the Risk Runner right there. Because it would have proc Dark Conductor. I couldn't beat him with a melee or a grenade combo. I'm not going to get a super back by the end of this round, so I just need a style on him now. No! Arcbolt! Please! Okay. I tried to get a little too fancy. My fault. But that's just, that's the sort of stuff you do in practice. Because when it really matters, tournament setting, a trials match, whatever, might make the difference. We also traded a lot of rounds, which is funny. That doesn't usually happen. Let me make sure Edge can uh, unmute. I'm here. Okay, perfect. Good match. You too, dude. You'll see how funny it looks from my perspective. You'll like it. Dude, I really... <laughs> you know that one snipe over by Finn? Yeah. When you were coming around? I came out the second you like were looking the other way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's what I tried to get you with. Yeah, I, I like... tried to bait your, your love of power ammo by tossing a grenade over the top of the map and then making myself like too obvious of a position in mid so that you would just collapse while my back's to you. And then the nade would yeah. fall on top of you as I 180 to hit you. I think you did that one of those times. No, already, it, it didn't happen, but like I was so going for it. You got me with an arc bolt that was really well placed because I was actually about to peek with yeah, the bolts. Yeah, the bolts carried me in the beginning. The bolt but got me. You played the long game better than I did. I got impatient. I was trying. I didn't so think I could get another to... super by the time. Once I pulled that snipe though, I was like, oh, I got this, man. All I have to do is body shot him and I can kill him out of the animation for arc strider. Nope, I missed. Oh, that's just how it goes. All right, round two. No, I'm kidding. That took far too long. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this. I will do uh, a lot of 1v1s with all different friends, including Edge again, but maybe he'll play my loadout instead. We'll see. I'll be down for that. <laughs> Fighting Lion. Bring it. All right. See you in tomorrow's episode, guys.